Hello viewers, this lecture is about communication and internet technologies part, which is 1.2.1. 1. Uh, this is about networks. There are so many things in it. We will be having a long lecture. I might break down this lecture in number of lectures as a series. Anyways, let us start explain the client server model of network computers give example of applications which are which use client server model describe what is meant by the world wide web and internet about the hardware which is networks routers gateway servers about uh, public networks like pstn dedicated line cell phone networks and the benefits of and drawbacks of cables, radio waves, microwaves, satellite. And then ultimately we will be um, discussing bit stream. Now, let us start with the, the origin of the whole networking infrastructure and all. So let us start. This is uh, the first network. ARPANET. One of the earliest forms of network back in 70s in USA was this Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, ARPANET. This was an early form of packet switching, wide area network. Packet switching and public switching we will be discussing in A2. For now, just take it like uh, whatever the data which is flowing over the networks is being chopped uh, into pieces before it leaves the computer and those pieces flow over the network and when they reach to the destination using IP addresses then they are assembled back. So these pieces are called packets and the network which are making use of these packets are packet switch networks. So this was an early form of uh, a packet switching wide area network connecting a number of large computers in the Department of Defense in US. It later expanded to include university computers. It is generally agreed that ARPANET developed the technical platform for what we now call the internet, okay? So, a personal computer develops through 1980s a local network began to appear as personal computers developed through 1980s a local network began to appear people have started making their own local networks inside their offices or homes or universities so this became uh, known as local area network or lan l a n so local area network is uh, Look, uh, this became uh, LAN, and LAN tended to be much smaller network, usually inside one building. Connecting a number of computers and shared devices such as printers and uh, other computers together. And then there was, uh, uh, already I talked about uh, wide area network, WAN, typically consists of number of LANs connected via public communication networks such as telephone lines or satellite. So, ARPANET gave a way for wide area network, which is spread over geography. Geographical barriers uh, were not the issue for that network. And then came in after the proliferation of uh, smaller computers, personal computers, uh, the local area network. Local area networks, several local area networks, when public switch telephone networks appeared, they got connected as well. That has made a wide area network for the public. Because when uh, consists of LANs joined together, it may be a private network and uh, a password and user ID may protect it. Uh, this is in contrast to the internet. 
internet which is a vast number of decentralized networks and computers which have a common point of access so common point of access so uh, that anyone can access to the internet can connect to the computers on these networks this makes it intrinsically different from wide area network because in wide area network you have to have uh, a username and password or ids and you are only allowed to get attached to other computers if you have access to that network but for internet it is not necessary uh, anyway so network computers so network computers they require some sort of hardware to get attached to each other network computers form an infrastructure which enables internal and external communication to take place the infrastructure includes uh, in hardware for for hardware they require lan cards local area network cards these cards this hardware enables a computer to take and drop data over the network lines wirelessly or what and then routers routers are nodes over the internet which enables the data flow from one network to another flawlessly and then we have got switches switches are mostly used uh, inside local area networks we will discuss about this and then we have got wireless routers and then we have cabling system this sort of hardware is required for the network computers and then few people say that server is hardware but mostly server in technical terms is the software so server uh, is a software which is installed over a hardware and that hardware with that software is called server that machine is dedicated server but mostly when we talk in terms of networking or internet server is software so software we need uh, operations and management of the network software we call it server secondly we need uh, firewalls for the security and then we need security application and utilities as well remember what we are talking over here is uh, not uh, the purpose rather than the formation of uh, the infrastructure for network computers we will be discussing all this and then we need services from service providers for the working of uh, our network uh, with the public networks as well so we need sometime we need dsl digital subscriber line for internet access and then satellite communication for 
bigger companies and uh, um, uh, organizations and government they use uh, satellite as well generally when we are accessing sometimes we also access uh, through satellite but satellite is not um, um, mostly used by in, uh, private people it is mostly for uh, media and governments and military users afterwards we have wireless protocols that enable us to transfer data like with uh, wi-fi or bluetooth or um, with uh, gsm like we have got 4g at our home and all and then ip addresses there is a separate uh, lecture for ip addressing you can access that from our um, youtube channel so so let us start uh, the discussion about this chapter first of all it says explain the client server model of network computers now we have discussed what is network in general terms so those computers which are network can form client server model so let's see how so let us discuss client server model we will uh, be we can consider for client server model uh, this diagram let's say this is our internet and then we have got these computers here these are considered as uh, clients these clients are using internet as you can see this is a computer this is a laptop this is um, a tab and then on the other side we have got computer which is server so this server is also attached to the internet now a system ad administrator manages the whole network clients are connected through uh, uh, a network allows access uh, even over a large distances all right so these are the clients and request to the server and the server finds the requested data and send us back to the clients uh, the client server model uses separate dedicated servers and specific client workstations client computers will be connected to the server computers uh, users are able to access most of the files which are stored on dedicated servers the server dictates which users are able to access which files the client server model allows installation of software onto client's computer 
the model uses central security database which uh, control access to the shared resources so what are these servers so let's first discuss about these servers uh, a company or user would choose a client server network model for the following reasons. We are using it. We are using it and it is very common. The company user has a large user base. However, it should be pointed out that this type of network model may still be used by a small group of people. I discussed about it. Access to the network resources needs a proper control. There is a proper control. We cannot access it directly without username and password and access rights. There's a need for good network security and it is available. The, common, the company requires its uh, data to be free from accidental loss. So if we have got this server already signed for in, uh, emails, we access the servers in the form of YouTube, we access this server for cloud and uh, there are other things we access this server for gaming and there are so many other reasons we are accessing it or companies are giving us access to it so an example could be the company amazon this might be Amazon server. It uses the client server uh, network model. The user front is updated every time a user logs on to Amazon website. And a large server architecture handle um, items such as order, processing, billing, customer, and data security. I hope that you know that uh, Amazon is the world's largest uh, e-commerce company. They are selling everything. Uh, they started as a bookstore and now they are the biggest, uh, one of the biggest um, e-commerce company. Not just uh, the goods, they are also giving services. Like uh, uh, they provide a service to create software and provide through their servers those softwares. So none of the uh, Amazon users aware that the customers are using the website at the same time. There is no interaction between users and servers since they are kept entirely separate at all. All right, so you need to understand that uh, client server model is actually one of the most common models used ever. So we will consider a uh, client server over here uh, as a topic uh, which is um, significant in terms that uh, they may ask us the CIE may ask us that what sort of uh, client server um, services we are availing so we would have to tell that we avail emails we, we see uh, YouTube videos we use cloud uh, storages and and we use servers for gaming and all of it is available after getting through uh, the security everyone who uses this client server model has username and password or what so whatever sort of security that is required and also the get gadgets like for gaming we need ps4 or xbox to access these so this was uh, client server model now after client server model we have uh, uh, this point which says that describe what is meant by the world wide web and the internet now uh, first we have to understand the difference between world wide web and internet people i believe use these words interchangeably and they think that they are mostly the same that's not the case there are fundamental differences between internet and the world wide web internet is a massive network of networks 
which are made up of various computers and electronic devices all over the world. Internet is a infrastructure. World Wide Web is a service running over this infra infrastructure. Uh, internet stands for interconnected network. The internet makes use of transmission pro uh, control uh, protocol, TCP IP, and internet protocol, IP. Whereas uh, World Wide Web, World Wide Web is a collection of uh, multimedia web pages and other documents which are stored on website. Yes, World Wide Web is just made for accessing documents through a browser and uh, multimedia web pages. There was a protocol, separate pro protocol was made for it, which runs over the TCP IP and that is called HTTP or HTTPS for security. HTTP uh, protocols uh, are written for using HTML. So this World Wide Web is made for providing data through the documents inside the browser. And those documents are delivered using a language which is not a language in terms of Python and Visual Basic or pseudocode. That is a separate language that just defines the body of the document which is being delivered and can be understood by the browser. Uh, it is called HTML. Uh, we will be uh, discussing a bit of it uh, shortly. And then uh, uh, lastly, in uh, IP addressing, we discussed the uniform resource locators, URLs, which specify the location for all web pages and uh, the related documents. Uh, web resources are accessed by web browsers, as I said, in uh, uh, World Wide Web. The World Wide Web uses the internet to access information from servers and other computers. So you need to understand that internet is infrastructure which enables several services to be uh, used by the clients and provided through the servers or for several networks or users to get in touch and exchange their data or whatsoever. Whereas World Wide Web uh, uses internet to access information from servers and other computers. And uh, web resources are accessed by web browsers, which are running over a protocol called HTTP, Hypertext Transfer uh, Protocol. Now, explain how hardware is used to support the internet, which is networks that we have already discussed about, routers, gateways, servers, uh, and explain how communication systems are used to support the internet, the public switch telephone network, the network that we use uh, for our landlines and dedicated lines, if someone has uh, those guards and a uh, vast amount of um, cash to lay their own lines and then cell phone, uh, cell phone networks. So let's discuss about it. So this is about uh, hardware and software. needed to support the internet. The fundamental requirements for connecting to the internet are a device. First of all, what do we need? A device such as a computer, a tab, or a cell phone. Uh, a telephone line connection or mobile phone network. However, it is possible that the tablet or mobile phone may connect to the internet using a wireless router. 
So we need a telephone line that provides us service like DSL or 4G network, something, or maybe 5G now. Uh, and uh, we also need uh, a router, uh, which can be wired or wireless or uh, a modem. Modern we need uh, for FDDI networks, which are fiber optic networks or old uh, network, old telephone um, used to have these modems. All right, so what else we need? Oh yes, uh, ISP, internet service provider, which enables us to get in touch uh, uh, with internet by providing us uh, IP and necessary connectivity and lastly a web browser or applications. This is what we need. So let's uh, first discuss about uh, PSTN. which is PSTN, Public Switched Telephone Network or PSTN in short. The telephone network system that we use is called this is used to connect computer devices and local area network between towns and cities. Satellite technology is used to connect to other countries. So if you are in one country, then this telephone network helps us to get connected. And if we like to get connected to other countries, then we need a satellite help as well. In recent years, telephone lines have changed from uh, copper to fiber optic cables. So they used to be of copper cables, telephone lines, and now they are over fiber optic. Now this is a very big transition, a very significant, uh, significant transition. Uh, telephone lines uh, have changed from copper cables to fiber optic cables, which permits greater bandwidth. and faster data transfer. All right, fiber optic telephone networks are usually identified as fast broadband. Uh, High-speed broadband has allowed uh, wide area uh, networks or wide area local area networks to be developed by using uh, wireless uh, protocols. High-speed communication links allow telephone and because of this fiber optic, high-speed uh, communication links allow telephone and uh, video calls to be made using computers and internet, yes. This connectivity to fiber optic has made it all possible. Telephone calls uh, require either an internet-enabled telephone connected to computer, uh, or an external microphone or speaker. Video calls also require a webcam. Nowadays, these are these things are already integrated in our cell phone. So mostly we make use of our phone. When using the internet to make uh, a phone call, the user's voice is converted to uh, uh, digital packets uh, um, using uh, voice over IP voice over IP. This is what when we make uh, a WhatsApp call or Skype call. Data is split into packets and sent over the internet via the fastest route possible, which is decided by these uh, routers. And then that is how the whole uh, thing happens. So 
So let's have a, a comparison between uh, making a call using BSTN comparison between PSTN and internet uh, when making a call. So let's see. First, let's discuss PSTN. PSTN uses a standard telephone connected to telephone line. The telephone line uh, connection is always open whether or not uh, anybody is talking. The link is not terminated uh, until the receivers are replaced by both parties. Telephone lines remain active even during a power cut. They don't need it, uh, electricity thing. They have their own power sources. Modern uh, phones are digitized system and uses fiber optic. Uh, existing phone lines use uh, socket switching. This circuit switching is another method uh, uh, in comparison to packet switching. This is part of A2, so we will be discussing it uh, in A2. So now, uh, phone calls uh, using internet. Which is voice over IP. Phone calls using internet, uh, using either an internet phone or a microphone and speakers with our computer or cell phone. Or we may also require for video call the webcam. Uh, the internet connection is only live while data is being transmitted. All right, whereas uh, telephone lines do not uh, um, get disconnected until, until both of the parties uh, disconnected. Voice over internet converts sound to digital packages uh, which can be sent over the internet. Whereas uh, telephone networks, they use circuit switching, which is a different case. Voice out, uh, over IP uses packet switching. The conversion uh, uh, from our data, the sound data or the video data into packet, uh, pa uh, packets is done using uh, um, this LAN card, local area network card, which is inside our computer. So this was one thing. All you need to remember about this, that uh, this topic is that public switch telephone networks uh, were already there. They were the first reason for us to get connected other than just making a call using our computers and devices. Once these companies like PTCL um, have transferred from copper cables to fiber optic, they now provide us with greater bandwidth uh, and faster data transfer and which now enable us to have a greater internet thing with faster bandwidths and voice over IP. So, Let's see. Explain how hardware is used to support internet networks, router, gateways, servers. Explain how communication systems are used to support. We discuss about public switch telephone networks and cell phone networks, uh, dedicated lines. And uh, further, let's discuss it. Now, routers. Routers enables data packets to be routed between different networks, for example, to join a local area network or a wide area network or internet. The router takes uh, data transmitted in one format from the network. So what actually happens that uh, uh, um, our computers are actually connected to, let's say if it is a, a local area network, then let's say we have got one computer And then we have got uh, another
and maybe another computer. These computers in a local area network, maybe let's say if it is uh, an office network, then we have a server there as well. So this is a local area network. So this local area network is making use of switch. We will discuss about switch shortly. And all these devices are connected to switch. And collectively, they form local area network. So this is one of the local area network, let's say at someone's office. Now, this local area network will be connected to router. And this router connects someone to internet or an other local area network. Or if um, there is availability for few private companies then or the government, then wide area network. Remember the difference between wide area network and internet is wide area network is only available through uh, um, through um, their own systems. So broadband routers sit behind a firewall. What is a firewall? We will be discussing firewall in a separate uh, uh, topic. Anyways, firewall makes sure that whoever accesses the local area network is not a hacker. So no illegal access is uh, allowed. So broadband routers uh, sit behind uh, uh, a firewall. Firewall protects the computers on the network. Uh, the router main function is to transmit internet and transmission protocol uh, function is to transmit internet and transmission protocol between two networks and allow private networks to be connected. So router is a node which enables different type of networks to be connected together. All of these ISPs that we have, they all are having their own routers. The router inspects the data package uh, sent to it from any computer on any network connected to it. Since every computer on the same network has the same part of internet protocol address, uh, the router is able to send uh, the data packet to the appropriate switch. And it will then be delivered to the MAC address. MAC is uh, actually the uh, local area network card that we have, media access address card that we have, they both are the same. If MAC address doesn't match any device on the network, it passes on to the router switch on the same network until the appropriate device is found. Routers can be wired or wireless devices. So you need to understand that routers are required, but you need to understand that all the routers work for the same type of protocol. Um, for example, in this diagram, the protocol that is being used is TCP IP. They work uh, on the same layer over TCP IP. So let's revise uh, in short words, routers enable data packets to be routed between the different networks, for example, uh, this LAN and this LAN and maybe this WAN internet and this LAN. The router takes uh, data transmitted in one format from a network and converts the data to a protocol and format understood by um, another network, thereby allowing them to communicate via the router. We can therefore summarize the role of routers as follows. Routers uh, restrict uh, broadcast to a LAN. So if this computer is sending data to this computer, this data would not go out. Act is as a default gateway. What is a gateway? Gateway is a, a device which is always at the end of a network. So when two networks 
communicate. Uh, the gateway is the device which is connecting them. So we will be discussing gateway uh, after a short while. Uh, router can perform protocol translation, for example, allowing a wired network to communicate with a wireless. So let's say if one of the cell phone is connected to this switch wirelessly, then that will also be possible. So now can perform protocol tr uh, translation. For example, allowing a wired network to communicate with the wireless network, the router can take uh, an ethernet data packet. Ethernet data packet is basically the packet uh, that was sent by the computer using that Mac. Uh, and uh, uh, convert it to the wireless packet and moves it on. Can move data between networks, the router and can calculate the best route. So sometimes it happens that uh, two networks are very far. So there are so many routers. Let's say this is one of the computer, which is connected to the internet and over the internet, there are so many ISPs. So let's say this is a router this is another router this is another router this is another router and this is the final router and uh, the next computer is on other side of the internet so this is internet so what happens that this computer connects to its ISP's router, then these routers have their own connectivity. They all are connected to each other. So these routers find you the best route, whether you would go through this network or you would go through this network. This is the duty of the router. So it finds you and it calculates the best route to a network destination. Now, gateways. Router is uh, also a kind of gateway. Um, gateway is a network point or node that acts as an entrance to another network. It is a key point for data on its way to and from other networks. It can be used to connect to or more dissimilar network. It is also uh, an advantage of internet that over the internet, there are so many different kinds of networks and they all are interconnected. And this interconnectivity out of, for, out of so many reasons, uh, one could be this, uh, gateway, which enables all different kind of uh, networks to be connected together. The gateway converts data packets from one network to another. Gateways can also act as routers. As I said that routers can also be called um, gateways. Uh, gateways can also act as routers. They are can act as firewalls or the servers themselves. In other words, any device that allows traffic to flow in and out of the network gateway uh, can be wired or wireless. All networks have boundaries so that all communication within the network is conducted using devices such as switches or routers. If a network node needs to communicate outside its network, then it needs a gateway. So uh, we can say that uh, gateways are actually those devices which are at the end of one network and they enable different kind of networks if they are dissimilar even to be connected together. So they know the language, the protocol of all sorts of networks. So from one network protocol to another network protocol, they can convert 
the data. Now, uh, wireless networks. So wireless is uh, mostly either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth that we use at home. Uh, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth offer wireless communication between devices. They both use electromagnetic radiation as the carrier for data transmission. Uh, Bluetooth sends and receives radio waves in the band of 79 different frequencies. And these frequencies are called channels. These are centered on 2.45 gigahertz frequency. Devices uh, using Bluetooth automatically detect and connect to each other, but they do not interfere with each other uh, since each communicating pair uses a different channel, which is out of 79 channels. When a device wants to communicate, it picks up uh, one of the 79 channels uh, at random. If the channel is already being used, it randomly picks uh, another channel. This is known as uh, spread spectrum uh, frequency hopping. We don't need to remember this for AS level. All we need to know is that Bluetooth devices use uh, 79 different uh, electromagnetic waves channels and uh, they do not interfere with each other because they randomly pick a channel if the channel is being used by another device, they take another device. So it means that at most at one time in one location, 79 devices can be connected with each other using Bluetooth. To further minimize the risk of interference with the other devices, the communication pairs constantly change the frequencies or channels they are using several times a second. Bluetooth creates a secure uh, personal area network WPAN, you might have heard or seen it, uh, especially when uh, we are assigning a password to a Wi-Fi um, um, network. And when we access it, it is mostly seen there, WPAN. So Bluetooth is useful when transferring data between two or more devices, which are less than 30 meters apart. So mind it, less than 30 meters apart. Uh, take notes. The speed of data transmission is not critical in Bluetooth. Farther we go, it becomes uh, slower. And if we are in close proximity, then it goes faster. The speed of data transmission is not critical in this case. Using low bandwidth applications, uh, for example, uh, sending music files from a mobile to a headset, it always works fine because most of the devices that we use with the Bluetooth are in close proximity. Wi-Fi also uses a spread spectrum technology. However, Wi-Fi is best suited to operate uh, um, full scale networks since it offers um, a much faster data transfer rates, better range and better security than uh, Bluetooth. A Wi-Fi enabled device such as a computer or smartphone can access for example, the internet wirelessly at any wireless access point, WAP, or we call it hotspot, up to 100 meters away. It might have uh, got enhanced, uh, but this is the standard that you need to remember that Wi-Fi uh, wi can help you to get connected to the devices in 100 meter radius. Uh, as mentioned, wireless uh, connectivity uses uh, electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, uh, microwaves, or infrared. The scale of frequency and wavelength, uh, let me create it for you. So let's say this is, uh, if you are a physics student, then you would have uh, knowledge of this if you are not. Well, these values do not need to be remembered. This is just for your knowledge and understanding so that the words that I'm going to use further can be understood by you easily. So we have got uh, radio waves. We have got microwaves 
and we have got infrared. And then we have uh, visible light and then uh, X-rays, ultraviolet, gamma rays, but that is not our concern at the moment. So, wavelength of uh, radio waves is this, 10 to the power 2, and they work in 3 uh, megahertz frequency. Whereas uh, for microwave, it is 10 to the power minus 1, and this is 3 gigahertz. Look at the change. And infrared, it is 10 minus 3 and 300 gigahertz frequency. So now, if we try to understand it in terms of uh, bandwidth penetration, bandwidth penetration, and uh, attenuation, So bandwidth means how much the data it can transfer. Uh, penetration in terms of if, if it can cross through um, any uh, hindrance that comes like doors and walls and furniture and all. And on a higher scale, if it can go outside the earth ionosphere. And attenuation, it means uh, how much uh, um, problem or the data it takes inside itself when it travels. So uh, the distortion of the signal as a result of uh, the distance, that is attenuation. So in this case, infrared is better than microwave and bandwidth, for fine bandwidth I'm talking, infrared Infrared is better than, I'm using this greater than sign uh, as better than, than microwave. And microwave is better than radio wave. So it means that uh, infrared has the largest bandwidth and the radio wave has uh, the least. Penetration, in penetration, radio wave, is better than microwave and microwave is better than infrared. And in terms of uh, attenuation, radio waves are better than microwaves. and microwaves are better than infrared. So penetration uh, uh, measures the ability of the electromagnetic radiation to pass through different media. Attenuation is the reduction in uh, amplitude of a signal. Infrared has a low attenuation because it can be affected by uh, for rain and internal house walls and all. Thus we can um, uh, expect infrared to be suitable for indoor use only. So we can see that if, if we have got a TV or um, AC and we are using this remote control, that remote control is making use of infrared. Uh, microwave seems to offer best compromise since they support reasonable bandwidth and have reasonable penetration and uh, uh, attenuation. So these are wireless networks uh, support uh, uh, wireless technologies that we are using in terms of uh, um, usage uh, for different devices for different reasons. Now, Uh, so, 
the use of uh, microwaves and uh, radio waves was uh, uh, discussed as a method of for allowing wi-fi connectivity in networks uh, these methods are perfectly satisfactory for short distances uh, what about longer distances longer distances between countries between continents so the electromagnetic waves uh, carry the signals but the curvature of earth prevents such methods transporting data globally so what does that mean so our earth is this way so let's say if we have got uh, antenna a here it is transmitting in this direction it cannot reach at this antenna b this is very hard so what comes to use is satellite so what we are discussing it over here is uses of satellites so electromagnetic radiation from antenna a transmitted but it is unable to reach antenna b due to earth's curvature to overcome this problem we need to adopt satellite technology now what satellite does let's say we have got one satellite over here the satellite is placed in earth's orbit now what's happening that this point a is sending to this satellite the signal is beamed from point a antenna a uh, to satellite orbiting the earth and then that signal is boosted by the satellite orbiting earth and uh, is then beamed back to earth and picked up by antenna b that is how it happens so the communication between uh, antenna uh, and satellite is carried out by radio waves so these are actually radio waves or sometimes they are microwaves as well both are fine so the communication between antenna and uh, satellite is carried out by radio waves or microwave frequencies uh, different frequencies bands are used to uh, prevent signals interference and allow networks uh, spread across the earth to communicate through the uh, uh, satellites so that is what uh, about the satellite use now 